This is the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens and I think it's probably one of the most talked about lenses when it comes to Sony cameras. But is that hype worth it? Let's have a look at the Sigma 16. Taking a closer look at this lens, you've got the back cap, which screws off to reveal the E-mount and those electrical connectors, which allow the camera to control the settings directly compared to manual lenses where the control is only available through physically turning the controls on the lens itself. Through a special sealing within the mount, there is some dust and splash resistance. But if you're using a camera that has no splash resistance, just keep it out of the rain. The Sigma branded a front cap, which when removed reveals the lens itself. And for those of you wanting to purchase filters for this, the size of this is 67 millimeters. There is also a lens hood that comes in the box, a sort of petal shaped one that is attached using that familiar twist lock mechanism and it fits quite firmly and still allows you enough space to fit your attached filters. On the lens body, you've got that familiar white dot, which if you've got Sony lenses, you'll know that this lines up with the dot on the camera, allowing you to easily attach the lens to the camera body. Like most Sigma lenses, there is minimal text on display, other than the ones that you would normally expect, including a branded C showing that this lens is actually part of Sigma's contemporary range, which claims high optical performance in a compact and lightweight build, complementing their art and sport ranges. Weighing in at 405 grams, this lens is actually more weighty than it looks, but that's not a bad thing and shouldn't affect your ability to get that shot that you want. But it does weigh more than the camera body of the Sony ZV-10, this 55 to 200 10 millimeter zoom lens and obviously a lot more than the 116 gram kit lens so it's definitely going to be a visual upgrade if you're going from the kit lens to something like this it has a sturdy solid feeling in the hand there's nothing about that black look mixed with those rib textures or the metal and high-end plastic mixture feel of this lens it doesn't say it's of high premium quality with that modern twist and sleek finish if you're familiar with other Sigma lenses, then you'll be getting much of the same with this one. The manual focus is controlled by this large rubberized rib section, which rotates around the lens infinitely and smoothly, without giving you that stepped feedback or tactile feel that you get from some other lenses. But nevertheless, just like the weight, it's not gonna affect your control of the camera. Because this is a prime lens with a fixed focal length of 24 millimeters when on an E-mount or APS-C camera like the ZV-10, which makes it a 35 millimeter equivalent because of that crop sensor, the lens does not extend during focusing or zooming, just like this lens does, which provides its benefits when taking pictures or videos in certain conditions and definitely makes controlling gimbals like the Zion Crane M2S a lot easier. And as it's a wide angle lens, you're gonna get much more of a wider field of view compared to something like your kit lens, but depending on which mounted version of this lens that you do get, for whichever camera brand that you've got, each one across the different mounts has a varied wide angle range. And one of this lens's star qualities that makes it both stand out from the competition and gives it a great value to performance ratio is its ability to create that desired, by many, background blur. To facilitate this, there is a nine blade rounded diaphragm which gives a maximum aperture size of f1.4 all the way down to a minimum of f16, meaning that you're going to get a really good low light picture quality with reduced flare and ghosting in bright light, along with that nice bokeh. As there's no aperture ring on the lens itself, changing the aperture is an on-camera function only. With the aperture wide open at f1.4, you're gonna be able to get some of that intimate shallow depth of field shots like these. And when you stack loads of them together in your photo editor in post, get amazing shots like this. This lens provides really fast and smooth autofocus at distances at and beyond its minimum focus distance of 25 centimeters all the way to infinity and does it very quietly and almost instantly thanks to its optical and motor design. It utilizes the normal fast hybrid autofocus focus that you expect from Sony cameras and their native lenses, giving you a seamless performance whether your subject is still or moving. If you're taking a photo and you turn off the camera's own autofocus sounds, other than the on-screen cues, you wouldn't even realize that it's focused so quickly. I can literally only hear the lens focusing if I put my ear to the lens. And when you're shooting videos, there is slightly more of that expected sound of the autofocus motors working their magic, particularly if it's in continuous autofocus mode. So if you're using the 
camera is on board mic and the sensitivity is turned up high, then you might want to crank down the sensitivity before you press the record button. But with external microphones that I use, I've not found this an issue. In manual focus mode, the large smooth focusing really helps dialing those specific focus points that you want, particularly if you use the focus magnifying feature. I used to like the picture quality that I got on my kit lens. Yes, it could have looked better, a bit sharper, but for the average photographer, this would have been more than enough. That was until I took photos and videos with this lens. For everyday shooting, you'll be impressed with the shots and the quality that you'll get, as it will give your images the greater level of detail shown in the main areas of the picture across all available resolutions. At its maximum aperture of f1.4, you'll really notice the difference between the center and the extreme corners. But if you dial the aperture down a little, you'll find that sweet spot. This is definitely a lens that is more than capable of producing impressively sharp, detailed images, just like in these examples. Video quality wise, I've had this lens for a few weeks now, and compared to the kit lens that I was using before, I can see the difference between the sharpness and the focus separation between the two lenses. I'm in this spare room setting with not much room and with a wide angle I'm able to be much closer to the camera and work better within the dimensions of this room. If you're a vlogger then this lens is ideal for you because it's wide enough to vlog handheld as you can see here which is going to help create visually better looking content where the detail is sharp and the autofocus is going to be close to silent. There's no built-in lens optical stabilization like you find on some lenses like the kit lens but you can use the camera's own active stabilization but remember this will crop into the frame a little more. Or you can even use applications like Catalyst Browse where you can usually iron out those shots out in post. Or you can use a gimbal that will give you that extra reach as well as that added stabilization along with a few other nifty features. The Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens is a great lens to have amongst your other lenses. For me, I now regularly interchange between this lens, my newer 35mm f1.7 manual lens, and this Sony 55-210mm to f4.5-6.3 to zoom lens. And that pretty much covers me for all my photography needs. Video-wise, the Sigma is the only lens I now use covering all of my A and B roll shots. Look how good this lens looks attached to the Sony ZV-10. This lens was built to complement mirrorless cameras like this, and you can see why. Made from quality materials, finished to a high standard, and it even looks like a Sony lens, taking advantage of the technologies of your camera and utilizing them to create potential masterpieces. This versatile lens should cater for most of your requirements. Some people may consider this lens to be a bit big compared to other lenses that are close to its specs, but you'll probably not find one that matches this price. What you're getting from this lens is its durability, its features with the f1.4 aperture for use in low light conditions and getting that background blur, its fast accurate autofocus, sharpness and its ability to produce detailed images and videos. This lens might not be completely flawless as there'll still be conditions where the use of this lens wouldn't be recommended, for example macro photography, but other than this it's straightforward and easy to use for those point and shoot technical shots that are going to produce impressive detailed images in mostly all situations. With just using this lens I can see why there's the hype around it from people and creators who have APS-C cameras like this one as it can offer high quality resolution at the wide open aperture and throughout the aperture range. The design of the lens allowing that smooth quick and silent autofocus during video shooting and the best part about this lens is the price. Something that most entry level users can at least strive for and it's certainly a great accessory to invest in particularly if you're taking and sharing high quality photos and videos. I'll leave the link to this lens in the description below. If you've got any questions about the Sigma lens that I didn't mention in the video, just note them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Press that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already for more camera, phone, photography and videography content just like this one and I'll see you in the next one.